Have you ever wondered what the opposite of delayed gratification is? In the world of Foxhole, it is maintenance cost. Delayed gratification was made famous by the Stanford Marshmallow Experiment, where children were left with the choice between eating one marshmallow now, or ignore the one marshmallow on the table and get two marshmallows 15 minutes later. Put differently, delaying the gratification of eating now to get a better reward later. Children best able to resist the Children best able to resist the immediate gratification of eating the marshmallow on the table now, but waiting for the increased reward later, were linked to having better life outcomes overall. Maintenance cost is famous in Foxhole, where builders are left with the choice between building all they want now or ignore the immediate need now, plan ahead and work together and get less maintenance cost later. Put differently, not putting in the planning effort now to get a worse maintenance cost later. Builders best able to resist the immediate urge to build what they want, but planning for a decreased cost later are linked to having better life outcomes over. <laughs> Let's be honest, since you are here watching a video about Foxhole maintenance supply cost, the ship on good life outcomes has clearly sailed. Builders best able to resist the immediate urge to build what they want, but planning for a decreased cost later, are linked to having less burnout and being able to maintain their builds throughout an entire war. We have all seen the rotting corpses of once glorious production facilities strewn across the mid and back lines of SIVA. There, because the appetite for more production or defensive capabilities simply outpaced the willingness to supply the necessary maintenance supplies for as long as the war lasted. With the removal of the supply consumption modifier for subregions in update 1.56, the situation improved somewhat since facilities weren't hit with a four times multiplier to their maintenance throughout the duration of the war. To be able to see where we are now when it comes to maintenance supply costs, I organized a new maintenance supply census during War 127. The previous census I did during War 102 was a single run through three different maps. Ashfields, Heartlands and Red River, where I noted down the maintenance supply consumption of every tunnel and base that had MSUBs in it. For the new census, I decided to take a look at both factions and try to get data during different times of the war. Trying to make the census as unbiased as possible, I made a list of the resource nodes and mines available in the backline maps, and then compared colonial maps to warden maps. Which landed me dead in the central lane, with Basin Sinek and Kalakai both having the same amount of resources each. Three scrap fields, seven scrap mines, two component fields and two component mines, no sulfur field and one sulfur mine, no coal fields, and four oil fields. As for timing, I was looking to get data on the maintenance cost during at least the tier 2 phase of facilities and during the tier 3 phase of facilities. I ended up with three sets of data after taking the last data during the penultimate day of the war. Then, to get the data for the warden side, I needed somebody willing to go along in this harebrained scheme, which I found in the person of Shapo. Shapo. Shap which I found in the person of Shapo, who was willing to sacrifice some of their time recording data on the warden side. The last census day I found Nexar willing to fill in for Chapeau. I owe both a big thanks for agreeing to do this tedious job. The procedure is very straightforward. Visit every structure that can provide maintenance and that has maintenance supplies in it. That is, every tunnel, bunker base, encampment, safe house, town hall and relic with at least one MSUP in their stockpile. Note down the amount of structures that use the supply source and how many supplies will be consumed per hour. Also note down the current stockpile of MSOPs and the type of structure it is. Finally, to keep track of all visited structures and to avoid doubles, note down the coordinates of the structure. Censuses, sense, census, sen, censuses were carried out on September the 3rd, September the 17th and October the 7th. Trigger warning. The following part of the presentation will contain a lot of numbers. Some of those are simply there to help show my work, and others are pretty significant to the story. I tried to keep the worked out calculations to a minimum, and where I did, tried to run through them quickly and resist the urge to explain every step and why it was made and concentrate on the end result. If you are mostly interested in the final result, but not the calculations, just nod along like you are actually following with all of them and finish with a, I see, interesting, when we reach the conclusion. On September the 3rd, 82 decay preventing structures were surveyed in Kalakai and 86 in Basin Sinek. By September the 17th, the amount of decay preventing structures had increased to 132 in Kalakai and to 115 in Basin Sinek. Near War's end on October the 7th in Kalakai, belonging to the losing colonials, the amount of decay preventing structures had dropped back to 90 and in Basin Sinek there was a slight drop back to 103 decay preventing structures. 
the amount of structures that had decay prevention, the total hourly M sub consumption, and the amount of available M subs in stockpile show the same rough trends across the three different censuses. Galakai starts with 3,947 structures that are protected, which increases by 64% to 6,500 during the second census, and sees a 34% drop on the third census to 4,302 structures having decay prevention. Kalakai's hourly consumption rate starts at 4,740 MSUPs, increases by 73%, and then drops back 35%. And the amount of stockpiled MSUPs starts at 330,414, increases by 54%, and then drops back down by 45%. Basin Cynic starts with a higher amount of structures that have decay prevention at 5,505. Sees it increase by only 17% to 6,429 during the second census, and drops back down 18% to 5,292 during the third census. Basin's hourly consumption rate starts at 6,464, increases by 20%, and drops 18% by the third census. The amount of stockpiled M sub starts at 442,895, increases by 72% for the second census, and drops 40% by the time the third census rolls around. Talking of those stockpiles, if we take the total amount of stockpiled M subs and divide that by the hourly consumption rate of each census, we see that, in theory, during the first census, Kalakai has enough M sub store to provide decay prevention for the entire hex for 69 hours. During the second one, this has dropped to 61 hours, and in the final day of the war, it was only enough for 52 hours. In Basin Cynic, during the first census, this is pretty equal at 68 hours, increases drastically to 98 hours during the second census, and drops back to 85 during the third. On an individual stockpile fill level, we see that in Kalakai, 59% of decay preventing structures have a stockpile that will last more than two days in the first census. 60% in the second census, and 58% in the third census. Bases' individual fill levels are a bit more erratic. Starting at only half of all the decay preventing structures having a stockpile for more than two days at the first census, but nearly three quarters of them having a stockpile for over 48 hours during the second census. Landing somewhere in the middle, with 66% having a stockpile for more than two days in the third census. So how many orders of M-subs would it take to maintain both hexes? To figure that out, we'll need the maximum production values of the different production methods first. In the factory, an order of 400 M subs takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds, or 500 seconds. That is 0.8 M subs per second, or 2880 M subs per hour per factory at maximum, since orders in a factory are produced in series and not in parallel. In the mass production factory, things are more complicated. A single order of 9 crates, 900 M subs, will take 3 hours, 7 minutes, and 30 seconds, or 11,250 seconds. That is 0.08 M sub per second, or 288 M subs an hour. However, stacking orders in one category will shorten the production time, and stacking it to the full 25 orders, it will actually make the production time 13 times shorter than it would have been as a single order in the MPF. So 11,250 divided by 13 is 866 seconds to make 900 M subs, or 1.04 M sub per second, which means that at a maximum an MPF can output 3,741 M subs an hour. This would however require at least 25 people to keep the order amount at 25 orders continuously. In the materials factory, one order will produce 20 M subs every 40 seconds. That is one M sub every two seconds, or 1800 M subs an hour for each order in the materials factory. Since a materials factory can have five orders run in parallel, the maximum output for a materials factory is 9000 M subs an hour. Using these maximum production amounts, we can easily calculate how many factories, materials factories, and mass production factories we would need to maintain both axes. To supply the entirety of Kalakai during the first census, you would need 1.6 normal factories, or 1.3 mass production factories, or one materials factory with 2.6 continuous orders in it. During the second census, 2.9 factories, or 2.2 mass production factories, or one materials factory with 4.6 orders continuously. And during the third census, 1.8 factories, or 1.4 mass production factories, or one materials factory with 2.9 orders continuously. To do the same thing for Basin Cynic during the first census, you would need 
2.2 factories or 1.7 mass production factories or one materials factory with 3.6 orders. During the second census, 2.7 factories or 2.1 mass production factories or one materials factory with 4.8 orders continuously. And near war's end, during the third census, 2.2 factories or 1.7 mass production factories or one materials factory with 3.9 orders continuously. Now, this is a lot of numbers to basically tell you. One, I repeat, one single materials factory could easily produce all the M-subs needed for each hex to be fully maintained every hour. But having the production capacity is one thing, what about the raw resources needed to produce these M-subs? Well, raise yourself for some more figures. In the factory, you need 250 basic materials to make 100 M-subs, which works out to 2.5 BMATs per M-sub and with a refinement ratio of 2 to 1 leads us to a cost of 5 salvage per M-sub. In the MPF, you need 1375 BMATs for 900 M-subs, which works out to a little over 1.5 BMAT per M-sub, which in turn leads us to an M-sub cost of a little over 3 salvage per M-sub. In the materials factory, 150 salvage will make you 20 M-subs, which works out to 7.5 salvage per M-sub. A salvage mine fueled with diesel will at minimum produce 9 salvage every 8 seconds, which will work out to 4050 salvage per hour. A salvage mine fueled with petrol will at minimum produce 27 salvage every 8 seconds, and that works out to 12,150 salvage every hour. Note that we are using minimum production values here since the salvage production per cycle is scaled with the global player population. A salvage node on a salvage field yields 200 salvage when fully mined. With 250 nodes per field, the minimum amount of salvage a salvage field will produce is 50,000 salvage. Plugging in these numbers, we find out that at the highest measured consumption rate, 8,222 M-subs an hour, Kalakai's M-sub production when done in factories would consume 0.82 salvage field or 10.2 diesel fueled salvage mines or 3.4 petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage per hour. When produced in mass production factories, this would consume half a salvage field or 6.2 diesel fueled salvage mines or 2.1 petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage every hour. And when produced in a materials factory, it would consume 1.2 salvage field or 15.2 diesel fueled salvage mines or 5.1 petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage every hour. For base and Cynix highest measured consumption, 7,750 M-subs an hour, the total M-sub production in a factory could be done with 0.8 salvage field or 9.6 diesel fueled salvage mines or 3.2 petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage every hour. When produced in mass production factories, this would consume half a salvage field or 5.8 diesel fueled salvage mines or two petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage every hour. And when produced in a materials factory, it would consume 1.2 salvage field or 14.4 diesel fueled salvage mines or 4.8 petrol fueled salvage mines worth of salvage every hour. Depending on the production method, that is quite some salvage that is not accessible for war supply production and is dedicated to maintenance only. By calculating the salvage production rates for the hex, we can see what proportion of the hex salvage resources are used for maintenance. As stated before, both hexes have the same amount of salvage sources, 3 salvage fields and 7 salvage mines. Salvage fields produce a minimum of 50,000 salvage from their nodes, but their respawn time is dependent on the global player population. It fluctuates between 25 and 75 minutes. So the minimum amount of salvage we get from a field every hour is when it respawns after 75 minutes, which works out to 60 divided by 75 times 50,000 is 30,000 salvage. The maximum amount of salvage we get from a field is when it respawns within 25 minutes, which works out to 60 divided by 25 times 50,000 is 120,000. We already know the minimum continuous production rate of salvage mines, 4,050 salvage per hour on diesel and 12,150 salvage per hour on petrol. That means that at a minimum, assuming a constant production and mining rate and no time spent mining the fields, the hexes produce 3 times 40,000 plus 7 times 4,050 is 148,350 salvage an hour, and at maximum they produce 3 times 120,000 plus 7 times 12,150 is 445,050 salvage an hour. Right. 
This means that Kalakai's maintenance, with a maximum salvage consumption of 61,665 salvage an hour, then consumed between 14 and 41% of the Hex's total hourly salvage production. Basin's maintenance, at a maximum consumption of 58,125 salvage an hour, is a little less with between 13 and 39% of the total hourly salvage production. So, how does that compare historically? Strangely enough, there are not too many existing datasets on MSOP consumption for entire hexes, so we will have to make do with my MSOP census from War 102. And this has some issues. That census was done during the supply consumption modifier era and therefore does not have the same types of data and the data that exists does not translate directly. I used some base assumptions and recalculated the old census to be able to compare it to the new data. Bear in mind that some of the data are therefore only estimations, not measurements. In War 102, Heartlands had 67 active decay preventing structures, which is quite a bunch less than any of the War 127 censuses. It consumed, not unsurprisingly, less M-subs because of it as well, with an estimated consumption of only 2,477.5 M-subs per hour, which is only about 50% of the lowest consumption in War 127, Kalakai during the first census with 4,740 M-subs an hour. Ashfields had 90 active decay preventing structures, which compares nicely to War 127, and consumed an estimated 5,063 MSUPs an hour, which would be the second lowest consumption rate in the War 127 censuses. Red River had 114 active decay preventing structures, which would have put it in the middle of War 127's range. It consumed an estimated 4,496.25 MSUPs an hour, slightly less than War 127's lowest. So, what is the big finale? The inevitable conclusion that will spur you into action. The incredible insight that will change your outlook on the entire subject of maintenance cost in Foxhole. To be fair, there isn't really any. Just some common sense would be, plan ahead and determine what you want to do. Build as small as possible and try to build for continuous production more than for peak production. And, if possible, share production of certain materials or supplies with other facilities. Usually, there is no need for 20 materials factories in one single hex. Once again, a big thank you to Chapeau and Nextra for helping with the census. You can find the link to both censuses I used in this video in the description of this video.